Here's everything new in the latest iOS 16.4 beta from Apple. Everyone loves emojis, and here's the latest batch of new emojis, which include new options like shaking head, pink, blue, and gray hearts, a donkey, a moose, a blackbird, goose, wing, jellyfish, hyacinth, pea pod, ginger, fan, comb, flute, maracas, and a number of left and right facing hand options. Websites that are added to the home screen on an iPhone or iPad as a web app can now send web push notifications in the new iOS 16.4 and iPadOS 16.4 update, just like on the Mac. So for example, if I were to add MacRumors.com to my home screen, I would then start to receive push notifications for every article that goes live, which is something I highly recommend we all do like right now, but it's also worth noting that web developers must also implement this feature. So at the time of this video, I'm pretty sure there's no website that I can go out there and subscribe to and get notifications at this current moment in time. Also with this new web push notification feature, focus support will also be implemented to include these new notifications as well as notification badges. Speaking of adding websites to your home screen, you can now also do this with Chrome and other third-party web browsers. With the iOS 16.4 and iPadOS 16.4 betas, those who are enrolled in Apple's developer program are able to turn on developer betas directly from the software update section in the settings app. What this now does is eliminate the need to install a profile from the dev center in order to get developer betas, simplifying the beta downloading process. There's also an option for public beta testers as well who want to install updates with a lot less hassle. Now, as someone who uh, does this quite a bit, I'm happy that there is a uh, much easier way to streamline getting betas on your phone, but this will also put an end to the public sharing of developer beta profiles as installing a developer beta will require each person to be signed into an Apple ID linked to a paying developer account. The 16.4 beta also reintroduces the HomeKit architecture update that was actually pulled from 16.2 due to a wide range of HomeKit bugs that it added. The new HomeKit architecture is meant to improve the reliability and efficiency of communication between smart home accessories and Apple devices. Apple also made several updates to the podcast app, so channels access is now available in the library section, and Up Next now lets you resume episodes, start saved episodes, and remove episodes you want to skip. For CarPlay, there's now an option to pick up where you left off on a podcast with Up Next, or find new podcast options in Browse. Your Apple Music profile is now prominently available in the upper right corner of just about every single tab, so just a lot easier to get to your profile if you need to. And in the settings app, there's now an updated coverage interface that shows you the warranty information of your iPhone and connected devices like Apple Watches and AirPods. There are also options in the shortcuts app for creating workflows that lock a device's screen and control the always on display. Plus there is an option to automatically enable or disable stage manager on the iPad. When you send a link to a Mastodon post to someone in the Messages app, it now displays a preview of the content that was shared rather than just simply a link with an image. And there's also an always on display filter that can be enabled for a focus mode. And that's it. Those are all the new features right now that we found in iOS 16.4. Of course, if we end up missing something, we will update the article that's linked in the description down below. So be sure to check that out so you can see all of the new features that we might find over the next coming days or weeks. And and as always, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the new beta. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.